What's happening, everybody? Uh, we're finally back. Malt review time. Mikey and Arby, as usual. What up, guys? It's been it's been a minute. Um, we haven't done these reviews in a while. Uh, we appreciate the love from people emailing and commenting, asking us where we're at, and all the kind words and everything. So we're back. Um, the reason for the slight delay is we, we do these reviews at on Mikey's bar. Um, this is Mike's house that we're in. He's got little kids, so it's hard for him to kind of travel. And we used to live about 30 to 35 minutes apart, but now I've moved another 45 minutes further away. So we live quiet. Um, there's a quite a bit of a distance between us, so we haven't been able to meet up as much for the reviews. We've seen each other, of course, but we haven't, you know, we haven't had time to sit down and do reviews. Um, the reason for my move is I recently got married, so I've been really busy with that, moving into a new place. Um, so yeah, we're both married men now. He's got two little ones. I don't know if we'd ever talked about that before, but um, yeah, we usually do these reviews on, on Mike's bar because it's harder for him to, um, to travel with the family. Um, all right, without further ado, uh, we want to jump right into it. We are going to be uh, jumping into a Japanese whiskey, um, Hibiki 17, Japanese blended. All Hibikis are blended, um, and the, all the ones I've tried have been excellent. This one is bottled at 43% ABV, and in the United States... They sell out pretty fast, and they sell out all around the world pretty fast. What do these What do these go for? You, you bought this recently. What'd you get it at? That one I think was uh, one fifty. One fifty. So it's yeah. a good price. So I would imagine these go for anywhere from one fifty to like two fifty, depending on where you're looking at. Um, all right, this has been breathing for about thirty minutes here. The color, I would just say, is a straight. Straight gold, almost like kind of like a light golden color. You're almost a little light. Yeah, a little grainy. Mm, nice legs. On the nose. Right off the bat, I get a lot, a lot of freshness. I get um, fresh citrus fruits. It's got this. Vanilla and creamy, so like vanilla ice cream. And then I get like sweet grainy elements. I'm getting almost like a, a, a bourbon uh, cask scotch. I'm getting like creme brulee and croissants, a lot of breads, a lot of fresh fruits, pineapple, uh, kumquat. Definitely some citrus in the background, like very fresh, juicy, luxurious fruits. Very nice. It's not overly complex to me. Uh, what it does, you know, I kind of gave just a few general notes that really stand out, but it just does all those things really well. Um, and it, you know, it doesn't do too, too much more. That is true. It's really, on the nose at least, 17 years. It's it's not too complex, not too overly developed, but it is, it's very smooth. Yeah. It's In, very balanced. Yeah, and, and that's what you would kind of expect from, from a, you know, the blended whiskeys tend to be very smooth. Um, at 17 years, um, I think at least from the nose so far, this would, this would be appealing um, to a beginner as well as an experienced drinker. On the palate? Yes, sir. <coughs> wow. Almost too smooth. Mm -hmm. Zero alcohol burn. Mm. Wow. So smooth, so balanced, so pleasing. Very creamy. Mm, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very creamy. Incredibly smooth, velvety. Yeah. I get that vanilla ice cream. I definitely get that grain with sweet cereals. Mm. Definitely get some like apricot and fresh citrus fruit. Oh, yeah. And it kind of plays along exactly 
where the, where the nose was. I feel like the nose and palate are on board. On the finish, it's it's very lingering in the back. I don't feel much. It's kind of like from mid palate to the front. It's juicy. It's creamy. Citrus fruits. Right. Nice vanilla notes. And not, not yeah. Sure. Yeah, not that spicy at all. It just it's just a very smooth, smooth, delicious whiskey. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, not not overly drying, but no. a really nice amount of drying. You definitely still get that the drying element where the saliva comes in the front, you get the super juicy fruits, and then boom, saliva eliminates, get that dryness and you're craving more. So it's got that for sure. It's really nice. On a second sip. Um, I feel like I'm getting the same exact flavors. A lot of times it changes, but it stayed very consistent. Nothing really to add. Um, I would not add water to this whiskey. It's not our first time. My first time having, I've had it several times before from different bottles. Um, I would not add water to this whiskey. It's already so creamy and luscious. And I hate to use the word smooth again. The forbidden word in the whiskey community but it is it's very creamy and smooth and I, I'm saying that because some people a lot of people that aren't very experienced drinkers that's what they're looking for they don't want something with a bite and a kick and you know it could be overwhelming and it, you know in our beginning days that was overwhelming too for us so um, great whiskey great flavor um, I'm gonna score this whiskey but I want you guys to keep something in mind if you've been watching us over the last couple years Pretty much, I'd say like every six months or so, we kind of redo the scoring. What I mean by redoing the scoring is we've now, you know, we try whiskey all the time, all these new whiskeys, and we're lucky enough to try some really high-end whiskeys. So the scoring gets harsher and harsher, I feel like, about every six months. So where I would maybe score this a point or two higher a couple years ago, you know, naturally the score kind of drops. So yes, we've tried an incredible amount of whiskeys where we feel like we deserve to score a whiskey. You know, we've tried so many where we have a great idea, but even so, you know, it continuously changes with the way I view and score whiskey. So with that being said, um, I'm gonna score this, this whiskey in 87, where in our beginning days when we were doing reviews, I maybe score this in 89, okay? So for me, it's an 87. I'm gonna give it an 88. Okay, so a very, very, very solid, very, very solid whiskey. Um, do wanna bring something else up in this review as you guys are seeing in the title and probably wondering what we mean um, by it. Uh, we want to introduce parts of our collection. We've been doing a lot of reviews, but a lot of them have been really high-end samples, some high-end bottles, and um, you guys have seen parts of our collection, but not some of the, some of, not, not some of our higher, higher end pieces. Um, we do consider ourselves serious whiskey drinkers, but serious collectors as well. And we tend to open our high end bottles um, and try them. The whole point of the whole journey is to try these incredible whiskeys, not just to hold them and put them aside and let them go up in value and sell them. That's not really, it's not really our goal. Um, so we do want to, we're going to start doing what we refer to as museum piece bottles, probably maybe like one every two to three months or so. Okay. And we're slowly going to, instead of showing the collection, a lot of you have asked, a lot of you have asked us to do a collection video. Our collections are kind of all over the place. We have different places where we keep it. Um, even the, even so we could show you what's here right now, but what we're going to do is we're slowly going to roll them in. Um, and I want to give you guys an example of what we consider uh, a museum piece bottle. So before I bring them out, a museum piece bottle is basically something you can't get. Um, if you're gonna get it, it's gonna be at an auction and they hardly ever pop up on auction. So, you know, some, some of our bottles we haven't seen in any auction for three, four years, not even one. Some of them you see like maybe once every six months. So that's kind of what we consider a museum. So very rare, very high quality, and when it shows up, it goes for an insane amount of money. So, well, I'm going to kind of show you guys what I mean. I have a, a couple bottles here. This one is an incredible, it's a really cool looking bottle. 
It's an incredible bone more. Most of these, most of these bottles were released uh, or distilled in 1964, and this particular one, I don't. It does, it's not a 1964 vintage, but most of these were, and they're just known to contain some of the very, very finest whiskey that Bowmore has ever released. Um, it is an incredible bottle. I think in the auction market, it goes for around $3,000 right now, but I would not consider, Mike would not consider this to be a museum piece bottle. It's really rare. You're not really gonna find it at a store, but if you do search around the auctions on a monthly basis, they do pop up from time to time. So I wanted to show you an example of an incredibly rare bottle, something most whiskey drinkers have not had the privilege of trying, but we wouldn't consider it um, a museum piece. What we would consider a museum piece is this 1971 vintage Glengarry bottled by um, Samaroli. This bottle is, those of you who are not familiar with Samaroli bottling, it's an independent um, Italian bottling company, but Mr. Samaroli himself, who recently passed away. Um, if you do read things like Whiskey Fun and follow the Malt Maniacs and among other like high-end collectors and connoisseurs, a lot of them consider many of these Samaroli bottlings to be some of the very, very, very best. And we, we also collect Samaroli bottlings. So um, they're incredibly expensive. This one recently went for about $10,000 at an auction. Saw it recently. Um, it's incredible juice. We will review bottles like this, including this one, of course. Um, so just kind of wanted to give you guys an idea of what's to come for malt reviews. We're gonna show you guys some museum piece whiskeys along with our usual stuff we do. Um, and yeah, just wanted to let you guys know. Um, hopefully you guys are excited for what's to come. I know we are. And we'll see you guys soon for many more reviews. Cheers. Cheers, baby.